Hello everyone, I want to do a short demonstration here on how to troubleshoot a Briggs & Stratton coil if you don't have a spark plug tester um, and in this case uh, my Briggs is a 24 horsepower ELS uh, what happened was is it wouldn't start um, I just assumed that the uh, the magnetrons went bad and I went ahead and ordered two more and I had the same problem uh, it wouldn't start so <clears throat> you know if you have a spark plug tester uh, great you would put it in line and then you would look for spark yeah you know and if you saw spark you would know it wasn't your uh, I'm just gonna call these coils it wasn't your coil however I don't have that so um, I'm gonna show you what I did uh, and ultimately what the problem was. It turns out it wasn't the coils, uh, it was something else, and we're going to get into that. But anyway, uh, you just take your meter that you have, and you can set it to ohms. If you have an ohms uh, setting on your multimeter, set it there. And, uh, you know, you can take one end, put it in where your spark plug is, and then you take the other end and you put it where ground is. And you'll see on here, I uh, get 4.6K. Uh, on this one and that to me is a good coil uh, I heard that they can range anywhere from 2.5 to you know even upwards of a little over 5 and they'd still be good uh, I do know that this one's 4.6 and it actually works so uh, that's how one way you can test to see if your uh, coil is good um, and then <clears throat> you can do the same on the other one and you'll see here oh, got to get a good connection here oh. okay four <laughs> sorry about that 4.6 if you saw it it happened there um so what ended up happening is the coils were good um and one thing I noticed was, is if I took off um, the kill wires the, on both, this is where the, the, your kill wire will go to, these tabs, uh, the engine would run. Um, and as soon as I put the kill wire on, it wouldn't start. So... I immediately began to do some research and, and try to figure out what what was going on with the wire when the wire was connected up uh, to both of them why wouldn't it start you know now this is a simulation of the kill wire uh, it basically is one wire you, you can't if you follow this end here this goes to your ignition switch so when your switch is off it goes to ground which will ground these coils out and, and uh, kill the engine or make the engine not start uh, it's one wire however it breaks into two right here so it breaks into two one goes to this one one goes to that one where these things go bad and I didn't know this at the time is there are two diodes in here uh, and what the diodes do is they isolate the coils from each other and the reason they do that is because if you didn't isolate the coils from each other um, they one coil would ground out while the other one was trying to spark thus you know making the thing not start because it was grounding them out so I took mine apart right here and I know the newer style is in the wire the older style they actually had a um, a diode block you know uh, a real small diode block and, and this would attach to it and this one would attach to it then it would go to ground but the newer models, the diodes are in the wire. And all I did was I got a razor blade and I peeled the wire and I can see what happened. Uh, you know, I have a, a, a thing here of two diodes uh, that I end up putting in mine, two that were just like this. But I'm going to see if I can get a good picture of these for you. Kind of show you what they look like. I don't know if that's focusing in or not. But the diodes, uh, a diode, the purpose of these diodes are really to uh, 
really make the f make things go in one direction and not allow them in in the other direction. And at the end of every diode, or well, at least this particular one, there's a silver mark, which indicates that uh, things can go in this direction but not come back through in this direction. And the ones that were blown out in my diode pack, these the black part was completely blown apart and it was a straight wire going through. So what was happening is is they it, the diodes were not isolating these anymore. So all of them uh, all the time one of them was always on ground. So that's why it wouldn't start. So what I did was I peeled it back, I cut this, peeled it back and basically if you have remember the silver parts on this side here. So all as I did was I took these two, I twisted this side up here like this. I connected the back part, which goes to the ignition wire and to the, you know, the ignition kill wire this way. And then I ran, uh, kind of did something like this. I put that one on there. And this one was here. And it kind of went like that. So basically what I did was I replaced the diodes. Uh, as soon as I did that, uh, the thing started up. So I wanted to pass this video along to anybody that is troubleshooting one of these uh, uh, Briggs & Stratton where you have two coils. Uh, the issue can be is that your coils are good, but your diode pack uh, in that wiring is bad. So. You know, you can really pick these up, these diodes at any any electronic store should have these uh, diodes. You can put them, you know, cut the wire away. I did, just put them right back in. And then what I did was I put heat shrink on this one and heat shrink on that one to separate them so they wouldn't touch each other on this side. Doesn't matter if they touch on this side because again, this is just going back. You know, if you were to follow this wire back, this is just going back to your switch or uh, ultimately your 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 thing that controls w when it's grounded and when it's not grounded so this side really doesn't matter it's when you get from you know uh, coil A and coil B you have to isolate these two so they don't touch each other like that but hope this helps someone when they're trying to troubleshoot the uh, a no start condition on their Briggs and Stratton